Hello boyos, Rich Boy J here back with another video. And today I wanted to introduce you to a very special part of my collection. Videos of YouTubers flexing their vast Lego collections are about as common nowadays as Star Wars revivals. But instead of going that route, I wanted to do something a little bit different today and show you guys the 10 most sentimental items in my Lego collection. But before the video starts, I do have two simple requests. If you could go ahead and take your time right now to hit the like button and also subscribe. It was hard enough to narrow this list down to 10, so I'm going to start with two honorable mentions. The first honorable mention is the 2004 Millennium Falcon playset. This is an awesome playset in its own right, but I remember having a pretty interesting history with it. I remember seeing this in the store and just begging my grandmother to get it for me. I wasn't even a Star Wars fan at the time, but I just thought it looked like a cool Lego set. I was fortunate enough to get this set on Christmas and I stayed up late that night building it. At that time, the only Star Wars knowledge I had was from seeing the Phantom Menace in theaters some years earlier. And all I remember it was looking at the minifigures and thinking, who is Han Solo? I don't remember him in Star Wars. It wasn't too long afterwards that this set became a disassembled part of my Lego collection and my big bucket of parts. Fast forward to some months later, I discovered the Lego Star Wars video game and then I became a huge fan of Star Wars. As I dived deeper into the fandom, I started to realize, holy crap, I have a Millennium Falcon. I took a weekend to just dive through my huge bucket of parts and try to rebuild it, which at the time was easily the most daunting task that I'd ever attempted with Lego. Aside from a few part substitutions, I was able to rebuild it and I had a Millennium Falcon in my collection. Considering that the next playset Falcon didn't come out for another six years, this was definitely a smart move for nine year old me. Second on the honorable mentions list is my biggest and bestest trophy from Brick Fair in 2021, which I won for displaying my Starkiller base stage. I definitely don't do these large scale builds for accolades or trophies, but I will be lying if I said I wasn't at least a little bit salty that I didn't win a single award for the full Starkiller base, which I displayed at Brick Rodeo the week before after all the effort it took to get that build together. It definitely made that effort feel a bit more worth it and justified by getting recognized for just a fraction of the mod at such a prestigious convention. That's gonna finish it up for the honorable mentions though, so let's go to the actual list. Number 10 on the list is my mosaic of my profile picture made by a member of my community named Kidu. The interesting thing about this though is that it's actually an alternate build of the Lego Beatles mosaic set. So if you guys have the Beatles set already and you would rather have it depict an artist with music that's actually relevant to this era, Kidu made an instruction booklet so you can have your very own Rich Boy J mosaic. In terms of pure effort, this has to be one of the most thoughtful and creative things that I've been given. Anytime I tell people about my community, I always have to mention that this exists. So thank you so much, Key Dude. Number nine on the list is my original Moss Espa Padre set. This set was gifted to me by two community members who I had the pleasure to call two close friends, Kosov Christensen and Lord of the Bricks. If you wanna see my actual live reaction to receiving this, I'll drop the link. It was actually a really special moment. This was definitely a set that I desperately wanted as a kid, but it had long been retired before I got deep into the Lego Star Wars game. My earliest members of Star Wars are from seeing Phantom Menace in the theaters in 1999, and while I don't remember much from it, the pod race was very much a sequence that stuck with me throughout my life. This set is top tier, and it captures that sequence perfectly. It also helps that all these sets make an appearance in the original Lego Star Wars video game. Speaking of which, number eight on the list is my original copy of the LEGO Star Wars video game. If I had to point to one item on this list that has the biggest influence on me, it would definitely be this game. I wouldn't necessarily say that this is where it all started for me, where it comes to LEGO Star Wars, but it definitely is where things got serious. This is the game that made Rich Boy J. Number seven on the list is this custom Mahonic minifigure gifted to me by my good friend Ben, AKA Playmation Shorts. This figure is accurate to the one depicted in the LEGO Star Wars video game, which I guess is gonna be a common theme in this video. Ben sent me this figure as a total surprise and the timing for it could literally have not been more perfect. As a short backstory, many years ago, I made a bunch of custom pod racer mocks as part of a long-term plan to build a Moss Espa pod race layout. While that layout never got finished, I kept my pod racer builds and boxes in my closet. These builds sat in my closet for like eight years until one day I just randomly decided to take a trip down memory lane and look through them. For whatever reason, out of all nine builds, Mahonix Pod Racer was the one that really stuck out to me so much that I just had to take it out and display it on my shelf. In just a few weeks, Ben surprised me out of nowhere with this Mahonic figure. 
At that point, I just knew it was fate that I pulled that build out, and from now on, this pod racer and minifigure will be a permanent part of my shelf display. Continuing with the theme of the LEGO Star Wars video game, number six on my list is my negotiations mock that I did as part of our LEGO Star Wars the video game collab at Brickworld 2022. That collab was so special to be a part of, recreating a game that means so much to me with great friends and seeing all the excited reactions at a convention made that entire experience a core memory. I love this build not only because I'm happy with how it turned out, but primarily because it reminds me of that incredible experience. Number five on the list is this autographed Jarek First Order TIE Fighter signed by all my friends from Brick Fair 2021. My guy 327 came up with the idea, so I can't take credit for it necessarily, but it was the perfect way to commemorate not only the end of my Starkiller base mock, but also a really fun convention. Some of you might not be aware of this, but each time I finish up one of my large scale builds and disassemble them, I try to make it a point to keep at least one thing from the build assembled in order to commemorate it. So number four on the list are those such items. I have this cargo crate from Scarif, my ATM-6 from Crate, these propaganda posters, Admiral Versio statue, and helmet dispenser from Vardos. I kept quite a few things from Starkiller, like my Big Snoke, the First Order banners from the stage, and I kept one of the full turbo lasers from the stage, but that's broken down into smaller sections. If it were up to me, I'd love to keep all my large scale builds together forever, but while that's not possible, keeping a small, special piece of each one of them is the next best thing. Number three is gonna be my custom AT-AT mock. It is sat broken down in the corner of this shelf for some years now, but don't let that fool you, this thing has gotten me through some tough times. In all seriousness though, this is my first vehicle mock that I extensively planned and designed. For a build that I made in 2015, it still holds up surprisingly well. To this day, I'll still come across photos of people's collections where they have one of these built, and it makes me smile every single time. I hadn't really thought about it, but up until Starkiller, this build was actually a big part of all my large scale mocks, which makes it even more special to me. Number two on the list is my 2002 Republic gunship. What can I even say about this thing? This set was my childhood holy grail. It was the first toy that I fell in love with, but it was always just out of grasp. I was fortunate enough to find this thing sealed on eBay in 2017 for like $200 shipped. If you really want to throw back, I actually have a video of me unboxing this set on my channel, and I would bet money that it's probably the only unboxing video you'll find of this set on YouTube. Even 15 years after its release, this set had lived up to all the hype from my childhood. I don't care how tough times get, I can never see myself parting ways with this beauty. I kind of like to look at me getting this set in my adulthood as tying up the biggest loose end of my childhood. Now speaking of Republic gunships, number one on this list is my custom Republic gunship build. This doesn't have the weight of being a childhood holy grail or being a gift from a special person, but out of everything I have in my collection, this build definitely gets me the most emotional every time I look at it. The Republic gunship is my favorite vehicle in all of Star Wars canon, so any LEGO version of it that I own is gonna mean something to me, but the fact that I designed this one just takes it to a whole nother level. I cannot express to you all just the level of pride I take in having designed this thing. I'm so happy with the way it came out, and even if people make better designed Republic gunship mocks, nothing will ever take away the joy that this build gives me. This build was not just a passion project, but I feel it also signified my evolution as a builder and really showed me what I can accomplish when I give something all of my effort. And that's gonna finish up the video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed taking a more personalized dive into my LEGO collection. It seems like nowadays hype beast culture and LEGO is just running rampant. Everyone wants to flex the most valuable things in their collection. But I hope with this video and moving forward, we can make lists like these a little bit more popular. So I wanna challenge anyone watching this video, whether it be in the comment section below or in your own video, go ahead and let everyone know what parts of your LEGO collection are the most meaningful to you. If you like what I do, go ahead and support the video by hitting the like button, support the channel by smashing that subscribe button, and I'll be back again very soon.